Okay, and welcome back to another exciting QLab tutorial. I thought this time I'd do a demonstration of how I control visuals within QLab, a little bit more in-depth look at what QLab is capable of. And the use case for this, this time around, is a TV studio where I've got the ability to control the LED video wall surface. So because I'm operating remotely here with this demonstration and on a design surface, I'm not directly attached to the computer that would be controlling the video wall. And therefore that surface is offline, which is why we're seeing some of these yellow caution uh, flags here in the interface. And basically that's just saying, hey, look, there's some stuff that's not right with this. Um, but we're in audition mode and that way we can ignore those kind of flags for right now. Because again, this is just design practice. So in audition mode, you can do some cool things such as float your surface window to see a preview of what you're actually outputting from QLab. So I've gone ahead and done that here. And I'm just gonna show you step by step how I have built this file so you get a sense of what you can do visually within QLab. So the first thing I've got here is a video wall background loop, which is a looping MOV file, and it's been brought in, you know, and targeted. And I've moved it to, if you go to geometry tab here at the bottom, the bottom most layer, it's on layer bottom. That way it stays up the entire time. So I'm just gonna take you through this so you can see what the build looks like, and then I'll dissect it. So you start your, your show, Maybe we're gonna fly a headline in next. So we fly a headline across the wall. It kind of does a fade in and move at the same time. And then it's gonna go up and fade out out of the site. And then we're gonna bring in our first story. So there's an over the shoulder with some text that flies in. That's gonna then go off. And maybe we've got a second story on the other side that we're gonna bring in an image for and fly some text in with. And then that's gonna go off. And you get the idea. Notice the entire time, this single loop has been running seamlessly. And the cool thing with using QLab to achieve this is if you're not using professional grade um, CG playout software or, or some kind of like server-based product that can do layering in this manner, it gives you individual control. So for instance, if I bring in this element here, and I only wanna take something off, unlike in PowerPoint where I'd have to lose that entire slide or whatever it is if you're stretching across slides or like in Keynote, things like that, I can turn just the title off. I can turn just the image off. And I'll go back and do that one more time. This time we'll take off just the image. So we've got our title in there. I'm gonna take off just the image, but leave the title up. So you've got a little bit more manual control over this on the fly. And, and meanwhile, I have not affected my overall loop in the background. So for a live program, this is very helpful because then you can make tweaks on the fly. You can go from edit to show mode, things like that, and make a tweak coming up um, if you're running that close to deadline. So as you saw, this loop continues all through the entire presentation. It doesn't go up on top of anything. And the reason for that is because if we go to the geometry tab at the bottom, it's on the bottom most layer. Now the problem with that is, if I want the title to show up next, this headline, which is just a text object right there, and then you click on text in the text tab down here, you can change it, give it its parameter, such as the font type you want for the typeface, the shadowing, the size, all of that. Uh, the problem is we've got to do a little bit of geometry with this. So the text in this case is assigned to the topmost layer because if we didn't do that and we brought it on, I'm now going to go back to that text object. If I say bottom, oops, now it's behind it. And you can see there's a lot of layers you can work with here. So there's a lot of flexibility. So for our particular purposes, we've got it assigned to the top. So I'm just gonna stop that. And what's happening here is the text starts here. This is our title. So we've got text right here. You can see it's typed in, in the text tab. But if we go back to geometry, 
we've got a translation here that's pretty high. It's 1375 on the x-axis, which means it's way off in the plus. If you do a, a cross, like to the left is negative, to the right is positive. We're way over here. You can kind of see it hanging off here with the H. So that's where it's going to start. And then we've got a fade move, which is think of a fade as a keyframe. Um, QLab refers to it as a fade, but it's really more like a keyframe if you're familiar with any other kind of editing or design software. And so if we go back to the geometry tab, at this point, we want the translation to be zero, zero. That means it's gonna be zero positioned. You know, if I wanna bring this down a little bit on the Y axis, we're gonna go negative a little bit just to center that up a little bit more. And now you can see we're negative 20 and we've moved just the Y. But what's happening here is we've got a couple of highlighted areas showing us that we've got some keyframes essentially. And what we've done is to, to tie this all together, it's been targeted to the title itself. So you can see here the target set to title right above for this fade effect. And in this case, we've got an opacity of 100. So if you come over here, you can see in the previous instance, it's got an opacity of zero. So it starts faded out and off to the side, then it's gonna fade on. And by the time it lands here, it's gonna be at 100% opacity. And then the next fade after that, again, targeting that same title object, it's gonna go up off the screen and it's gonna still be at 100% opacity. It's just gonna move straight up. And then it's gonna stop and fade out. And that stops and takes this whole build offline essentially. So if we come down to the next one, again, this is what we call a left over the shoulder. The slug in, in television production refers to the headline object of a rundown. So we've got slug one for item one. And if we go into that group mode, you can see it's a start first and then enter. That's why it's a purple frame around it. It's gonna start the first one. And then we've got a couple of auto follows that continue th the, uh, the animation through for timing. And then it's gonna hold up until we wanna take it offline. So what's gonna happen is we have this background object. So we've got some stock art here. We can change the scale of this. X, Y, right now they're locked together. So the aspect ratio stays the same. If you want to unlock that aspect ratio, I could move just the X. And then what's happening here is we've moved our translation, our positioning. We want it off to the side and we want this on layer one. So we've set the geometry to be on layer one for that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with opacity 100. We wanna fade it up. So that means this has to start at an opacity of zero so that our first fade effect can start with an opacity of 100 and basically say, at this point, fade it in. So again, we have targeted this background image. This is the target. So for that fade effect, we've targeted that. The background image is on one. Next, we have our title. So there's our title. And if we go to text, we can change our text here. And if we go back to geometry, the only thing we wanna make sure in this case is that we've flown our title off. So the starting position of the title is gonna be all the way off to the side and we've got it faded out at zero. Now we'll add a fade effect. So you bring a fade effect in and we're gonna tie and target that fade effect to the title. So you can see we've targeted that right there. And at this position, now we want it to be moved in. So it's then gone in and we can move it a little bit more on screen like that. And our, our, our opacity is now at 100% so we can see it. So it's gonna then first fade on the background image and then it's gonna fly our title on over top of that. And if we look at that to guarantee that, our title is set to the topmost layer. We can do that because our previous title, the headline, is now stopped and off the screen at this point. So it's safe to assign another object to the top layer.
So that's what we've done here. So that's gonna come on top. How does this look? Well, let's build it and check it out because we might wanna make another change. So we've built that, that looks good. Maybe this text is a little hard to see. One of the things we can do to improve that is we can add a video effect to the background image. So if we click on our background image object right there and we go to video effects, maybe we wanna change the color controls and the brightness here and bring them down. So we've added a color control option and we're gonna just bring down the brightness ever so slightly. And again, because this is a studio, you gotta watch what you're doing and how this reads on camera. But let's just say this looks good. I can clearly see that title over top of it now. I like the look of that. We're done with this preview. I'm just gonna kill it here. We know that that's good. And then I can move on to the next one. So again, we start with another group. We'll make a group that is a start first and enter type of group. Inside that group, we're gonna put an object and that's gonna be our background image in this case, another stock image. So there it is. And we've sized it up here. We like the size of that. We've moved the translation 480 off to the right from center. We're gonna start it at 0% opacity, add a fade effect, target that background image again, and this time make the fade effect 100%. So now it's gonna fade it up. Don't forget to assign your auto follows. So you can do all that here. And you can see we've got some uh, auto follows. We've got a three second uh, duration on our fade. And then we've got title. Again, another title. This time it's gonna start off to the right. So I might even wanna make that a little bit more there. Again, a 0% opacity. Tie in another fade effect and target that title. You wanna make sure that your background is again on layer one. Your title is on the topmost layer. We're gonna move it in to the right a little bit. We might even go a little bit more to the left. So we're gonna go down more like 540 pixels or so. And we're gonna make the opacity this time 100%. So it's gonna fade on to 100% opacity at the same time as it's moving from the right to the left. And it's gonna sit there because we have all this auto continuing. And basically what's happening here is when you look at the basic, it's an auto continue, not an auto follow, an auto continue. Auto follow would be a different flag. See, auto continues what you want. And then it's going to go and sit there. And then at the end, it's gonna be another stop and fade it and take it all out. And you can see it's fading and stopping all peers. We've got a slight duration there of 0 0.03, so about three seconds or so, and it'll be off. Here's a background change. Now, this background's also assigned to the bottom, same as this one. So if I were to go to that next, it's running but you can't see it because I have this other one on top, even though they're both on the bottom layer, because it ran second, it's on the underneath of this. So we're gonna stop it. And sure enough, there it is. So what we can do, because it's also in the bottom layer and the top one, as you can see, is also in the bottom layer. Again, if they weren't, and they were both running. Just to demonstrate, if I move this to up a layer, there it is. But because it's bottom and it started after, you can't see it. So I'll stop them both. And basically, if I wanna keep it as a bottom layer, I need to tell it to stop the other peer. And because they're outside of the groupings, they're considered peers of each other. So we're gonna go into triggers and we're gonna say fade and stop peers. So you can do all, list, peers, whatever you want. Depends on your parameters there. And in one second, it's gonna stop. So if I had this going, and now I run this, you're gonna see a one second crossfade between the two. If I want to make that longer, 
here it is, and we'll make it a five second cross fade. There's your five second cross fade. Now, let's say you wanted to not have a cross fade and you don't see how to do that, there is a way to do that. Even though it's called a fade and stop, it's called fade and stop because it not only fades it, but it also stops this. You could keep it going. If you didn't stop it, this item would still be looping and just fade it out all the way. So that could affect your timing, especially visually with where it fades up. If you've got something that maybe you want to show a certain portion of a specific timing for um, when you get into more specific control. But if you made this a zero time, it's gonna be an instant cut. And I'll demonstrate that right now. There you go. I hope this look at how to control visuals within QLab natively helps you see what the possibilities are as you design your own content and map it to your own screens.